The fifth annual Extra Life Video Game Marathon is coming up on October 20th, 2012. Now it's time for gamers to make a difference. Extra Life is just like a run or a walk or a bike event, except you never have to leave the comfort of your own living room. Just sign up online at extra-life.org to register. On October 20th at 8 a.m., you play any games you want for 24 hours. Find out more and sign up to play online at extra-life.org. Play games. Heal kids. Extra Life. Unfortunately, where I live, all the single women are... uh in their 50s <laughs> oh god well you and know what the... at least they got some money i mean shit you know you know you get you got you got to make some work yeah. with that <laughs> maybe you think wouldn't you <laughs> yeah i mean if they in their 50s you know i mean at least look like uh a hot chick from dr quinn medicine woman <laughs> <laughs> i just i don't know maybe that's not all, all a bad thing i mean i don't know hey man she she's finer than a motherfucker oh, I, oh, I like yeah. the way she looks <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that, that that old woman could get it. <laughs> I fucked the shit out of Doctor Quinn. Shit. Uh, Doctor <laughs> Quinn, put it in. Hell yeah. <laughs> Doctor Quinn, medicine woman. <laughs> oh God, I can't even you believe you referenced that. Really, I know, right? Yeah, but you know what? I I just thought about like her being in a. Uh, in like a, a porn with, with like a like a like a tall black guy. How did I know you were going there? I knew you were going there. <laughs> yeah, this has some music in the background. Hey, Dr. Quinn, I, I need you to check me out, baby. <laughs> Is this normal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plop, thud. <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel a heartbeat? Yeah, and yeah, and I feel ribs too. My, my goodness, where are my ribs is coming out of my uh, throat. You see, oh my goodness, it's so big it has a heartbeat and ribs. <laughs> it has a heartbeat and ribs. That is fucking disgusting. Draw your sword, <laughs> knock your arrows, and ready your spellbook. It's time for another episode of the Gamesman. What role will you play? Guys, gals, and guildies, welcome to episode 80 of The Gamesman. This is the show for the 13th of August, 2012. I am Steve Conger, also known as JSS Lifelike on basically every gaming service imaginable. And I'm here for episode 80 to talk a little bit of games. We, we kind of said that we were going to do RPG again, but guess what? <sighs> there is a complete drought of news stories. So instead... We got a little special something planned for you next week, and this week we're just going to do a little bit of game talk, and uh, we're going to have a small session talking about the Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddess that I attended uh, with a couple of listeners. Man, a lot of fun, uh, but I can't do it myself, and obviously, who else would be here? Daniel Knappman, hardly Dan. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? <laughs> What's going on, Dan? Uh, it's all good, man. Yeah, chilling out. Yeah. Enjoying the sunshine, watching some Olympics. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, are they almost over yet? Yeah, it's the uh, closing ceremony in 10 minutes as we're recording this. Oh, man. 
Yeah. Like, I'm missing that to record this show. Oh, sorry about your luck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, special guest in the third chair, Brandon Poole, Mr. Casino 31. What up, what up, family? How's everybody doing today? Back for a second time. Yeah, in the second time. You know what? I'm having fun. The uh, the uh, gamesman is in, is in is in the mother trucking house, right? <laughs> exactly. I, I think or something. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I guess USA won won the gold in basketball today. It was only like a seven point game, but I mean, how when you got a whole country full of superstars, do you only win by seven points? Mm. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I would have figured they would have just blown them, blown Spain out. You know, like two hundred to a hundred. That's what she said. Bam. <laughs> No, you, you know what? I don't know, man, because, I mean, when you think of the Dream Team from, like, back when Jordan was playing, like... Yeah, yeah. They, you know, it's not on that level like like that, you know, whenever that formed. Like, they were just, you know, I mean, those scores was crazy, like, just blowing them out the water like crazy. Yeah, but, I mean, like, Durant and, and LeBron and... They, come, come on, man. They're, 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 they're top of the world, and they, no doubt, you know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. And you would think... With you know Kobe and all of those all of those brothers, you know going hard in the paint, um, especially with Carmelo Am- Anthony in that game a few weeks ago, dropping what what five million points in one game. <laughs> I mean, you you would think it would be like a you know like a bigger blowout. That's what she said, but you know, <laughs> but you know, a but, show uh, full of that's what she said. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I mean, but but the thing about it is, man. Uh, these other these other international players, man, is is really is really stepping their game up, man. They you know they actually playing, they playing ball. Yeah, they playing. So so Dan, how has uh, how has the Olympics changed the uh, the countryside over there? Um, well, in Devon, North Devon, not not really a lot at all. <laughs> There's a lot of cars with Union flags on their wing mirrors and those little flags going out the windows. Um, that's that's been about it. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's made it a lot quieter around here. Loads of people staying in, watching the telly. But um, as for the rest of the country, I don't really know. I haven't really travelled out anywhere because hmm. hell, the Olympics has been on. Yeah. Been watching on telly. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't stayed up on the Olympics too much this year. I don't know. I think it's this whole presidential election crap too. Like I'm, I I, I see this, this all this lying on a daily basis and all this crap, man. And I just I, I the last thing I feel like is go team USA. You know what I mean? Thank you. Oh God, <clears throat> I don't know. So, so you feel the way I do, uh, uh, JSS? Yes. So yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's all bullshit. Yeah, I think one of my tweets yesterday was great. So one lion fucker got another lion fucker as his running mate. So I wonder what the other lion fucker is going to have to say in return to that. <laughs> you know. They're, yeah. they're just all liars. Uh, God, I don't know. I'm so disillusioned and disenchanted with the American political system, probably politics in general, but especially here. You know what, what the problem is, though? The problem is that for the first time, I think, you know, with the rise of the Internet and us knowing so much information, we can see so much bullshit compared to what we used to back in the day. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's like, okay, these motherfuckers is full of shit. <laughs> Every last one of them. These motherfuckers is really full of shit. So I, I so so I think with, with us knowing, you know, with, with the with, with the viral spread of knowledge, you know, we know a lot more than we used to back in the eighties and shit. So <laughs> it's militia time. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. The the revolution will not be televised, motherfucker. <laughs> Or the apocalypse. And speaking of the apocalypse, uh, mm. guess what I kind of been playing a lot of? Let, let me guess. Some Walking Dead. Nope. You're, well, no? I, I have been. I, I did, but that was before last show. I haven't played it since. But, um, oh, okay. Finally got a chance to sit down with my $5 copy of Darksiders. Oh, you know what? I have not played that game yet. You probably should. I am, I'm kind of digging it. Wait a minute. So Dark Darksiders two comes out what like next week, right? Yes, next week. Yeah. Okay. So and and the thing is, I don't know that I'm going to purchase it. I mean, obviously, I have it on my Steam wish list, but I I think that that could make a pretty neat Wii U game. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I can wait a couple of months to do it. If I'm going to wait a couple of months to get it cheap on a Steam sale, I can wait to pay full price for it on a on a different platform, you know? Steve, you are the only one who has hope in the Wii U. I, I may very well. But now, 
Here's the thing. <laughs> and I've said this before. Steve is cranky when he doesn't get to play his Nintendo exclusives. <laughs> Steve gets very cranky. <laughs> so, uh, honestly, I'm to the point now where I'm looking at these new consoles and stuff, and I'm like, you know, I could very well just build like a $1,500 PC and have a Wii U for next generation and maybe be all right. You know what? That sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you, like, Darksiders, when you when you think about it, a lot of people sort of compared it to Legend of Zelda, like a, uh, you know, like an Ocarina of Time, and God of War, like a mashup. But what they neglected to throw in there was the little bit of, like, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time that's in there, too. Hmm. Yeah, it's like two parts of each and then a little tiny dash of Prince of Persia. Uh, and I think part of that is, like, the environmental traversal. It, it, it's so smooth and quick. You know how uh, a lot of times, like in Uncharted, where you sort of run up a wall and you grab onto a ledge and Nate Drake has to either just kind of hand by hand slide across this this sort of handhold, you know, right, or climb right. up and turn his back to the wall and sidle like close to it, you know? Yeah. Not the case here, man. Not the case here. War will just grab onto a handhold and literally run <laughs> and slide across the wall like full speed. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes traversal a breeze. It really does. Now, now, uh, when you say Prince of Persia, what, uh, are we talking about the early ni- 1990s? Yeah, the, the reboot, like P- the... Um, PC version, or...? The uh, Sands of Time, the, the first... Oh, okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, the one that was pretty highly heralded, I would say. Yeah, I, I guess when you when you look at Darksiders, and, and this was kind of the take that, I, you know, this is what I took away from it when I first started playing it, is it seems like your traditional sort of, I don't know, like third-person platformer that uses, like, equipment gating to, you know, to, to sort of stagger your progress. Like, there's uh, something that you, like, it, the boomerang in, in Zelda. You sort of get an equivalent of that in this game. But there are environmental things that you can sort of knock out of the way or something that bars your progress that you can use this tool against. So it's that kind of thing. It's almost identical to Zelda. And I'm, I, as I'm playing it, I'm trying to figure out how they're going to implement the light RPG elements that's going to be in the sequel. Mm. And the more I think about it, that could possibly be exactly what the Zelda franchise is sort of lacking and suffering from. It's still too plain. Like they, it, the the series hasn't grown with time. Now, now I have a question re- regarding Zelda. Why is it? I don't know. I because I haven't really been looking around in the news like that. But have they said anything about a new Zelda game for the Wii U? No. Why? Why the fuck would they not? Because <laughs> it's because it's not time. Because Skyward Sword just came out. I guess. Oh. It's just not time. You know, because yeah. I'm kind of thinking that's going to be a really, like, that one game would, I think, would make me uh, purchase a Wii U. Yeah. Just just yeah. Zelda alone, you know? Well, I, that's why I'm kind of hoping that Darksiders 2 is going to be really good on Wii U. And, and maybe sort of leave its mark. And if the next Zelda happens to be in development right now, and this game is successful with these RPG elements and everything, maybe... Maybe they might take a look at it. Hmm. I don't know. I'm hoping. But I'm really liking the game so far. I do. I like it. It is very cinematic. And, I mean, Vigil, I got a hand at the Vigil, man. <laughs> it, it's a it's a beautiful game. I'm playing it in 1080p, and even though it's years old, it still looks pretty good on the PC. But, yeah, I mean, I have probably about 8 to 10 hours in it, I think. I've experienced a lot, and I know I still have a lot to experience, and there have been some places that are, you know, it, typical difficulty spikes, yeah. you know, that I hate. But as a general rule, it's not too terribly difficult for being that old of a game. It still holds up rather well, and I, and I know Scotsman talked a lot about and praised the game, you know, aesthetically and uh, and mechanically and everything. And I, for the most part, I think he's right. I mean, the beginning of the game, I guess it, you still sort of don't understand it and seems to be a very, very isolated experience, but that sort of changes as you go along and you meet uh, a few more characters and things like that. But uh, so far, I'm digging it. And I, other than that, the, <laughs> the Desmond Debacle DLC for Quantum Conundrum, Oh, remember I said it was de- that Quantum Conundrum was devious last week? Yeah. Uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. 
<laughs> yeah, man. They have you doing puzzles that now force you to come back, you know, pick up an item and all the way back using all four, like they start you off right away with all four of the, the, the dimensions. Holy crap. It took me literally 25 minutes to get through the first chamber in that DLC. It's insane. 25 minutes. Damn. Yeah. I couldn't figure it out. And then, you know, figuring that out's the only the first part. And it's, it's all a matter of execution after that. And I bet you I probably died 20, 30 times. <laughs> trying to do it. Holy crap! It that's sounds like how a, you know you're uh, playing uh, uh, like a like a fun game is when you die over twenty times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you're still going back for more. <laughs> oh, I love it! And I'm exactly. sitting there thinking, "Oh my god, I can't figure this out." But it is very methodical, and uh, you know, if you take the time to figure it out, it just takes a while to process it and to kind of put the pieces together. But it's so rewarding. Uh, that that game really did a lot for me. I really, really like that game. Yeah, it sounds like something that I really should get. It sounds like it's right up my street. It is. I'm telling you, man, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, I don't know, Casino. What are you? Uh, what are you playing? That's about it. It, it for me. I. Well, let, let's see, fellas. Um, I've been playing. Well, okay. First, let me start off by saying that I had recently purchased the. Um, the uh, PlayStation Plus. Oh, you got it. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah, I got it. So, you know, so I'm, I'm trying that out and did not realize, I'm like, damn, there's a lot of free games. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, damn, I'm kind of liking this service a little bit, sir. You know, so um, been playing some Little Big Planet 2 and been playing a little bit of uh, that Just Cause 2. Uh, l- let me just say something about the Just Cause 2. Uh, it seems a little racist. <laughs> wait, 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 wait yeah, a minute! I, I never played it, so I don't know. I have no, I have no idea. It's, 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 it's really, it's really cheesy and corny, but it's, it's kind of fun though. So, so, so you got this guy, right? And he's, he's speaking in this fake ass H- Hispanic accent, and it sounds like a white guy talking in a Hispanic. <laughs> That's the best. That's yeah, great. it is. It is. <laughs> You know, so it's 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 really fun, and you know, I'm like I'm like hanging on. I, I you, you know, you you have this you have this special weapon, this little this little contraption claw type of weapon where you grab on stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You can like you can like hang from like helicopters and shit. It's pretty fun. It, you know, when I'm like blowing up shit, and then I'm like using the the Batman claw to get up on the helicopter and swinging and shit and shooting motherfuckers. Like it's it's really awesome. So I've been playing a little bit of that, but the main game that I that's been taking up most of my time, fellas, has got to be that Pac-Man Championship game. You know, I downloaded that and played a little bit. I saw that you played it, oh, and no. I said, you know, I I think I gotta play some of that. And that shit is just if you completely just got high on smack and tried to play some neon shit, like tried to play a neon sign, bro. I was high off PCP playing this, and I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Man, was in a pigeon coop. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> what was that from? What was that from? Uh, smoking? That was that had to be Friday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> high as hell in a pigeon coop. Yeah, man. <laughs> look, that Pac Man Championship game. Look, fellas. Ooh, let me tell y'all a little bit about this game. This game is so. It's so awesome. Why didn't anybody tell me about this shit earlier? I I know. I think people did. I just didn't listen. Yeah, I think that was the problem with me because. Dude, like it starts off like, you know, it starts off with like regular Pac-Man, but the speed goes up faster and faster. And every time you you get one of those bonus instead of those little Pac-Man pellets, you get like a bonus uh, thing that's in the in your way. Yeah, like cherries or like a cherry or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the the actual the mazes will change along with the ghosts. Yeah. Like every time. That shit is crazy. I've never had so much fun playing Pac-Man in my entire life. That's one of the best, in my opinion, that's one of the best games of 2012 right there. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking Pac-Man championship, man. If y'all haven't played that, y'all play that, man. That that game is awesome. Have you tried it, Dan, or no? No, but I'm looking at the uh, Google Play Store because I can get it for my Android. Well, let me just tell you <laughs> that what he was saying, the way the, uh, the, the, the mazes change, 
they will, like, let's say that your maze has a bunch of different ways on each side, and, you know, obviously they're symmetrical, you know? Yeah. Uh, but what they'll do is on one side of the map, you know, the, the ghosts will be, or will be flying around the map, and they'll just say, let's, they'll do a square ring, uh, of dots. And you just have to, like, eat that whole ring of dots. And once you eat that whole ring, the opposite side of the screen, like, wipes. It does, like, a, like, a vertical wipe. Yeah. And it changes. And then the objective switches to that half of the screen. Yeah. I mean, he, talk, man. I mean, I mean, dude, talk about an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Playing that game. Like, like that game will have your heart racing and will have you you cursing out your, your 1080p screen. <laughs> just like, what? man, it's, no, man it's, it's just a lot of fun, man. Let me ask you this. Was it my heart beating out of my chest? Or when you get close to a ghost and it sort of goes into bullet time where it slows down, does it go dum 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 dum? Because yes. I can hear that. I don't yes, know if it's actually too. the game or not. <laughs> me, me too. Me too, man. That 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 right there is pretty awesome to me. Uh, when it does the bullet time. Yeah. Whenever you get close to a ghost, and what I like about it, whenever you're about to get trapped, and it goes into that bullet time, you hit the X button on that motherfucker. Like it's like a bomb. Yeah. You can use yeah, yeah, it yeah. as a weapon, and it'll like push all the ghosts back to the middle of the square where they, you know, where they get out. Yeah. Man, that shit is off the chain. Like, why didn't anybody <laughs> tell me about this game? You know what the best part was? <laughs> when you do that that first uh, that first stage, and you manage to get through the whole stage without without uh, you know without failing, you get like five trophies in a row. Yeah, I mean, it just kept chinging trophies. I'm like, wow, this is great. Yeah, yeah, man, it's it's fun, man. I've I've I haven't had, you know, I'm sitting here with games. I mean, I got I got. I got like Battlefield Three and shit like that. I don't even play that, man. I've been playing Pac Man. <laughs> Have you tried uh, The Walking Dead yet? Uh, I just saw it earlier before I got on the Skype call with you guys. Yeah. And I'm downloading it right now as we speak. So no, I have not played it at all. But I will be playing it later on tonight. I'm anxious to hear what you think of it. Yeah, yeah. You know what? When I when I do play it, I'll, I'll probably text you and let you know my uh, thoughts on that. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. That. It has to be one of the biggest victories, I think, for PlayStation Plus. Really? Well, I mean, that's those are pretty relevant games, and to have them for free, <laughs> you know, the first two episodes, now that's probably all they'll get for free. Yeah. Uh, because now, you know, I, I paid $20 up front on the PSN for the season pass of Walking Dead, but now if you're a PlayStation Plus member, you're going to be able to play the whole thing for 15 bucks. I mean, but that's I mean, I mean, but that's not bad though considering if it's I mean, I've been hearing good things about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I haven't I haven't heard one bad thing about it, not really. Well, it, yeah, it, it's on your own onus to sort of get your money's worth out of it, you know. Right. And they keep adding free games, man. Who doesn't like free games? And I, I don't like <laughs> <have> free games. <laughs> 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 yeah right. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, yeah man. But that's that's pretty much. Whoa yeah. Um. Also. Um. And this isn't really. Uh. Uh. Like as far as playing games, but I have did the free month trial of the Crunchyroll app. Oh, for uh, uh for anime. Yeah. Yes. Let me just say uh, real quick that they need to work on the actual app on the PS3 because it's pretty shitty. <laughs> <laughs> but the service for the service for the anime um anybody out there that are big fans of anime like myself i think it's worth it you know yeah 12, 12 bucks a month for uh you know like a lot of different anime shows and it, and it updates weekly as well and i think they did say too that with the premium service you get shows subtitled an hour after they air in japan or something like that yeah, so that's it's pretty cool, and I mean, I I, I like watching my anime subtitled anyway, personally. Yeah. So is it just a, is it a user interface thing? Is is the UI just terrible or? Uh, well, I I sent a complaint email to Crunchyroll. I said, look, man, y'all motherfuckers need to get y'all shit together. Uh, you know, with with this PS3. <laughs> did app. you state it exactly like that? <laughs> yeah, I actually did. Yeah, I said it like that verbatim. I said, "Look, y'all motherfuckers need to get your shit together with this PS3 app." I myself, I, I'm 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 like big on anime, so. You but it know. was a proper email, so it said, "You motherfuckers need to get your shit yeah. together." <laughs> yes, yes. I, I actually, yeah, you know, I actually went to school on it. You know, I actually uh, spelled it correctly instead of the ghetto way. But. Um, <laughs> 
But yeah, man, like, okay, the problem with the with the Crunchyroll app on the PS3, and, and it's still new. It's still new on the PS3. You know, I'll give them that. But but the issue is when you're when you're playing it, um, sometimes it will freeze up, but the audio's still playing. Yes. So so take a couple of seconds for it to catch up. And sometimes sometimes it'll it'll freeze up and it'll log you out. Uh, and there's been a couple of times where I had to turn off my PC. I I thought my I mean not my PC, my PS3. I, I you know, I thought I was gonna get the yellow light of death. Uh one, one time fucking with that. But you know, since but before that, you know, that that was when it first came out. But then a couple of days later, they did a patch update on it. And it has been a little bit better since. Okay. So it's all performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. it's all yeah, so you know. I mean at least the service is there and, and and the app will come. But if you're paying for it, it should already kind of be there. You know? Right, right. And so, you know, I, I haven't paid for it yet. You know, I have still have a free month. Uh, you know, of uh, anime, so I'm probably, you know, I, I'm like watching all I can, you know. I mean, I'm still deciding, uh, you know, whether or not I'm gonna keep it. I think I might keep it, uh, you know, depending because um, they they did say that uh, in the future they plan on unleashing more shows in HD. So as of right now, a lot of the shows aren't in HD, but it's still good quality. It's yeah. it's good enough. It's good enough to watch on your TV screen. For, to me, at least. Well, they probably figure they have 30 days for it to not be shit. You know? Exactly. Basically. So. Uh, all right, Dan. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan. If you could uh, if you could keep Mr. Casino company for a little bit, I'm going to click over here, take this other call, and then we'll come back and talk about uh, what, what's been in your slot, as it were. Okay, <laughs> come sit over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dan stays on the line here, but I have with me uh, none other than Mr. Eins Masiel, Brandon Four, and uh, Amherst 89, Gary Lever. So, what's up, guys? How are you? Oh, you know. All right, hanging out. <laughs> hanging out. In, in, <laughs> hanging out in between uh, toilet projects. <laughs> Great. Toilet projects. Parking out with yeah, the when a toilet goes down, it is not a fun time. <laughs> Sounds shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, the reason why I wanted to uh, get you guys together in the same Skype room was to talk a little bit about uh, the little outing we had at the end of last month. And that was to the Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddess. Or Goddesses, I guess. I keep calling it Goddess, but the, I guess the proper name is Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses. Yeah, even I say that, and you're the big Zelda fan. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess that's kind of where we where we start with this whole thing. Brandon, you don't have... I mean, you have some Zelda experience under your belt. Whatever you um, you play. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, growing up with Gary and his older brother, who were infatuated with Zelda stuff, everything Zelda, I, I mostly watched them play pretty much every Zelda game multiple times, and if occasionally I would grab the controller and just screw around. So I would do some stuff here and there. I played a little bit know a little bit about it, but mostly just watched him play it. So when I did hear some of the music, I was I was like, yeah, I know what this is. Okay, I got this. Well, and especially probably the old school stuff. 
Oh yeah, it was mainly the old school stuff. And it, it's it's a huge, huge difference to hear the old school stuff sort of orchestrated and rearranged, and and uh, it, it's pretty impressive. Awesome. Oh yeah, like I said, I mean, it, <laughs> it was so good that it almost sounded fake, like it was just a pre-recorded. Yeah. Just a yeah. soundtrack to the video that we watched. Yeah, pretty awesome. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's that's something else to to uh, to talk about is there's a there's a huge screen, you know, right in the middle of the orchestra pit there, and uh, it wasn't just the the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, but also the Mendelssohn Choir doing a few vocal bits here and there, and and Gary, some of that stuff was uh, the, the the vocal things were pretty hauntingly awesome. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> So, I mean, what what did you take away from just getting there, the, the, the culture? And not as many cosplayers as I would have thought there w- was going to be. No, there was one good one. Yeah. And it was funny because they were all girls. And all of them were Link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw some pretty hot Links. Yeah, the one chick had a uh, had a pretty neat tunic with the... Um, uh, pop, pop tabs. Yeah, they were all pop tabs. tabs. Yeah, the, <laughs> the whole sort of chain armor was made of pop tabs, which is actually pretty neat and it looked great. Did it really good? It was definitely the best. Yeah, yeah, that one was pretty incredible. Then there was some, there was some weird stuff, but uh, but I think on the whole, you know, at that point, well, I can definitely say that I felt underdressed because <laughs> I was thinking, oh, there's going to be a bunch of people in costume, all these little kids running around. Yeah, there were kids running around, but there were a majority of the people were pretty well dressed because they were dressing for the hall, if not the people performing, more than just the you know content being performed. Yeah. Well, see, I, that's the thing. I kind of played it safe with a pair of jeans and a uh, you know polo shirt. I figured that's pretty safe. Right. But I, you know, thinking back on it, my wife she had a whole she had a, she bought a new dress that she elected not to wear, and and I had to hear about that the whole time. But that's neither here nor there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, that feeling was just in in the air. Like I, you know, you you could start to feel. It wasn't tension, but it was sort of that anxiety, that that anxious excitement as it started to move closer to eight o'clock. Uh, out walks, uh, who was it? It was like the uh, the creative director, I think. Like uh, I can't remember what his name was, but I, I had read that the arranger and the director was his name was Chad Sider, and uh, I think he was. I want to say that I read that he his credits were like the the Star Trek movie, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie, really, the soundtrack to that. So, I mean, if that is indeed the case, the guy kind of knows the deal, <laughs> you know? All right. And apparently, conducted by Emer Noon, who is the, I think, the orchestrator of a lot of the World of Warcraft stuff. Yeah, that's what uh, I believe it said in the uh, pamphlet about she had a hand in uh, some Blizzard-related products, such as... I think it was even Diablo 3. Crab. Really? Yes. Also, Diablo 3 was mentioned in that packet as well. Interesting. Which, unfortunately, I do not have... Well, it was terrible. It was a terrible pamphlet. Huh? Oh, it was, it was it was absolutely horrible. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> it had, like, ads everywhere. <laughs> ads all over the place. And yeah, it was pretty crappy. Didn't have any inkling of what they might be playing. <laughs> but they did mention her, and, uh, yeah, I believe Diablo 3 was mentioned, other Blizzard products, and maybe a couple other things. She's done World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, Diablo 3, do some with... 20th Century Fox, Nutcracker, it's a bunch. So safe to say that that was a pretty good bet. Oh, yeah. Then. Yeah. The show kind of opened up with the overture, and that that consisted of the overworld theme, the widely known Zelda overworld theme, uh, and then it sort of transitioned into Ganon's theme, and then subsequently Zelda's theme, the Hyrule Field theme, and then the Skyward Sword theme. And, uh, man, that right away... I, I had chills. <laughs> yeah, so did I. <laughs> right away. I kind of was... did, too, and I didn't even recognize it. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, this sounds really awesome. I don't even know what I'm in for. Yeah. Corny was waiting for me to tear up. <laughs> I'm surprised she, you didn't. She kept looking over. She's like, I know there's a tear coming. <laughs> uh, and then they go into uh, dungeons, like various dungeon themes. Mm-hmm. And, and the first there was a link to the past, and I think that was uh, that was pretty incredible and and incredibly uh, recognizable. And from there to Link's Awakening and Zelda Two, which to tell you the truth, Zelda Two got to be my least favorite of all the Zelda games. Yeah, I still have never beat that game because <sighs> getting to the end, like I have it on the 3DS, and I just 
I've made it further than ever, but I cannot get to the last dungeon. Yuck. Because it sucks so bad. I don't know. It was just too Metroid-y I, at that point in time. I, meh. Meh. But then they go to uh, the, you know, the original Legend of Zelda dungeon theme, which is another sort of haunting, you know, melody that is just so ingrained in my childhood persona and that little corner of my mind. But then Kakariko or Kakariko, depending on how you pronounce it, and I don't even know if there is an official pronunciation, but the village theme. And it was just a bunch of angry chickens, man, cacos, or however the hell you pronounce that. I don't even know how yes. <laughs> you pronounce that. Yeah, it was it was great. Just a bunch of angry chickens. It was like a mo- video montage set to music of angry chickens. Everybody was cracking it's up, incredible. though. incredible. Yeah. I mean, I even I, I recognized it, and I was cracking up, so... It's because it's like the one thing you have to do in the game. <laughs> yeah, <chicken>. no. <laughs> there was a ton of little, you know, like laughter, little pockets of laughter during the whole thing. And people weren't afraid to cheer. People weren't afraid to to laugh and, and, and to really enjoy themselves and enjoy, you know, The Legend of Zelda and celebrate it as I guess this thing is supposed to be. Clap uh, uncontrollably for a very, very long time. Yeah. <laughs> because... I was like, wow, I've never clapped this long for one song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they do say that Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra is one of the best in the country. And, and uh, you know, not that we have too much to compare it to, but if you just go by this performance, pretty pretty impressive. Yep. Um, yep. Well, I've listened to orchestrated Zelda themes and everything over the years, and this was a really good one. Yeah, it was it was done really well and, and accurate to a T. Oh yeah, yep. uh, and then a little medley of the songs of the hero. So there's the morning song, song of time, serenade of water, song of healing, and the song of storms. And of course, there was that little joke saying, "Oh, we performed the song of storms in Washington D.C. and it was it wasn't even thirty minutes, and it poured down raining." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, thought it was pretty funny. Right huh? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I was hoping it was going to happen because that would have been amazing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just for the for the ceiling to just bust, you know, the the, the one of the most beautiful buildings in Pittsburgh. No, no, we, we definitely didn't want that to happen. No, like, that, that, staring at it the whole yeah, time, we were yeah. right under it. Heinz Hall's pretty <laughs> gorgeous. And then, so it, it, this kind of starts with the prelude, and this thing is supposed to be it, it's a four movement piece, right? And it's supposed to be sort of like a history of the Zelda franchise set to music a la, like, a motion picture soundtrack. So it's supposed to tell a story. And the the whole thing sort of kicks off after this warm-up of the prelude, which is the uh, creation of Hyrule. It's sort of set to music the whole cutscene that played as the Deku tree sort of fills you in in Ocarina of Time. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole thing is leading up to, and obviously the first movement, which was Ocarina of Time. I kind of didn't have a problem with that. Even though, you know, chronologically, in, in our time, you would think different. But sort of in the Zelda timeline, that's a perfect place to start. And it's one that just about everyone is familiar with, I think. It's whenever I really started to get into the Zelda franchise. Because I played the other ones, but Ocarina of Time was like whenever I spent all this time, whenever I was like, you know, 12-ish and everything and... Whenever they were playing these songs, it just brought back so many memories, and I just was, like, in awe. Yeah, it was definitely one of my points, just because that's what I watched him and play <laughs> the most, and what little I did in the Zelda world. You know, I, a lot of it revolved around that for how much they played that. It's just the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask were just two games that are more engraved to me than any other ones. Oh, Majora's that. Mask. Mm. Yeah. Love doors mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, and, and it's funny, as bland and as pedestrian as a lot of the environments and things were in Ocarina of Time, what an epic game. Like, it was way more epic than it ever had any right to be. Hyrule Field got to be one of the ugliest things I've ever seen in a game. <laughs> you know, when you, when, you, when you think about it. You know, after Ocarina, they progressed on to movement number two, which was the Wind Waker. My favorite out of the whole night. Really? It was so good. Really? I lo- I just love the music to Wind Waker. I like the flutes and everything and the the whole uh, opening tune. Like, I used to play that song all the time just because I loved hearing it because it was always, like, cheery. You know, in, in retrospect, I enjoyed Wind Waker, the game itself, a lot more than I think I gave it credit for. 
back then. I may want to play it again just to listen to <sighs> yeah, that. Yeah, I was kind of there too. You know, it's bad enough I've bought it for, you know, the seventh or eighth time that I've actually purchased it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I, at least this time I've kept it, I could very well go back and play it. But, uh, yeah, Wind Waker was incredible. But the, the best part of it was noon, she pulls out a, uh, an actual Wind Waker to conduct that movement. Which was amazing. So wanted to go up there oh. and steal that thing. <laughs> <laughs> So at, at that point was the intermission, and uh, they come back and they play a little uh, little ditty called the Fairy Fountain, and uh, you know again the creative director comes out and says, "Oh, I feel so refreshed." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wah, wah. So after that they they headed to movement number three, which was Twilight Princess, and you know for as epic as Twilight Princess was, I still just don't have it up there on my list. Yeah, it was definitely a lot different. It was definitely a really dark take on the on the Zelda franchise. And you would think I would like that because I loved Majora's Mask, but Twilight Princess was so I think cookie cutter. You know, like it was it was two worlds, a light world and a dark world. It was a lot of like a link to the past and sort of like a a, a sort of blending of a link to the past and Ocarina of Time. And I just never got to, I mean, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I played it through to the end. I got all the, the heart containers, all that stuff, and had a blast with it. But, man, the music kind of took me back a little bit. Yeah, I wasn't... I never really enjoyed Twilight Princess's music as much as the others. I don't think it really had it, because I, they took the music to a really dark place, and it was, eh. Now, I, I think maybe it, it's a little easier to enjoy when it is sort of separated and gated from the content itself. But here, here's the weird part. And maybe I'm alone. Maybe I'm not. The creative director comes out again and he says, so now if you're following this as in the series chronology, the next thing and the last one would be a link to the past, which was movement four. But to me, that doesn't make any sense because according to that legend of Zelda timeline that came out in that, in that history book that, you know, in Japan, Mm -hmm. A Link to the Past only exists if the hero of time in Ocarina of Time fails. Yeah, they had those, like, three different branches off yeah, of it. Yeah, so Ocarina, and then Wind Waker and Twilight Princess only happen if he succeeds. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I kind of didn't get that. But regardless, A Link to the Past is a pretty good way to sort of wrap the whole thing up. Well, coming back to the real world a little bit here. <laughs> if they chose to play that song... He needed some kind of way to like edge it in there. Yeah. So, you know, he had to have, he had to say something that was a little quirky and, you know, fit. Maybe not the most accurate thing, but if that's what they wanted to do, he had to somehow, you know, tie it in there. It's better than just coming out and saying, guess what? But, uh, here we go. <laughs> and it, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. A Link to the Past was, uh, probably, I think for me, the most fun movement of the whole thing. And I think that was simply because you know, I've played through that game so many times, <laughs> you know? I've beat it seven times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's fun. That was my favorite game out of all the Zeldas. Yeah. Definitely number one. And it's fun to always go back to, you know, even to revisit for a little while. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but then there were some encores, and, and we don't really need to get into them, but, uh, you know, we stayed for the first one, which was the Ballad of the Windfish. And then we kind of took off because of traffic and things, and it was getting late. But we kind of missed out on the Majora's Mask medley, which was kind of crappy. Very sad. Um, yeah. Yeah, that makes me sad. And, I know. You know. I'm not even. <laughs> it still kind of makes me sad. It's one of the few that you know I actually like really probably knew. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there, I think there was a third. I think there was three on course or something like that. But um, I, I don't know. I I had a blast. I. Really enjoyed it, and I. But I will say that it has a completely different feel than the video games live show that I was at uh, a few years prior. I think it was in two thousand nine in Heinz Hall at the same place. Um, Excalibur and I went, and it's a completely different atmosphere. Like you know, you're you're sitting there, you're listening to Castlevania rock, and then you're listening to you're listening to Halo. You know, it it, it jumps from game to game to game to game, whereas this is more like, I hope you like Zelda, because that's that's all we got on the plate <laughs> today. Yeah, but the way you said it really doesn't do it justice. I mean, I'm okay with Zelda. I mean, obviously I don't love Zelda, otherwise I'd play the games. Or maybe it's just overexposure from Gary. But, <laughs> you know, I 
My bad. It was really great, even if you didn't care too much about Zelda. I mean, for example, we took Stacy and, and even Courtney to that extent, or your wife. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they weren't huge Zelda fans or even to the, maybe didn't even know anything about them, except for, oh, this little dude that runs around with a green cap. Yeah. But they were thoroughly enjoying, you know, all of it. And just, even if you didn't like Zelda that much, you watch the video and you're like, you know, the music fits. This is awesome. It sounds really great. And just, it was just an all around good time. Yeah. Now for people like me that are more general, general and stuff, you know, maybe the video games live thing, I would probably get into that a little more because I probably will play more of those games. (laughs) Yeah, That's Courtney my, wants I, to play uh, the Wind Waker now because she was watching it up on the screen and then she was hearing the music and she really liked that one. Well, see, and that, that's the thing I think with my wife, everything sort of post Ocarina was just simply off her radar. You know, everything that was Ocarina and before, she was really into. But I think it was sort of enough just to see, ah, you know, he's having a really good time. He's really enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, man, I I did. I felt like a little kid again, and it was it was just incredible and well worth the price of admission. Smiling yeah. ear to ear the whole time. Yep. <laughs> so, any any final thoughts, uh, Brandon, Gary? Steak and shake. Oh, <laughs> steak and shake. <laughs> steak and yeah. shake. Yeah. Afterward, <laughs> we, we popped your steak and shake cherry. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's we kind of where the fifth movement happened. <laughs> <I guess>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 aside from that pretty much as I said I mean it, not a huge fan I didn't play it stuff too much but got well, most of the references understood stuff and uh, really really enjoyed the performance and I would urge anybody that likes instrumental music Zelda or both whatever check it out you know you won't be disappointed yeah they'll make you like it <laughs> <laughs> it was very very good and just because I'm like one of the biggest Zelda fanboys ever, I still thought it was more amazing than I thought it was going to be. And I just had a blast. It was amazing. Completely surpassed your expectations, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, so th- does this mean that you guys are completely game and ready for video games live if and when it comes back to uh, to Pittsburgh or what? I wanted to go the next so. time it came anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who knows when it's going to be? I think the last time they were here for a bonus round was in 2010 or something, so it has to be sometime soon. My goodness. All right, guys. Well, hey, I appreciate you sitting down for a couple minutes for the show. I I wanted to discuss this a little bit and just, uh, you know, we we had talked about it, but I really didn't even want to get your opinions until we kind of sat down and got something on, on record for the show. So once again, thank you, guys. It was great to have you on. And uh, I'm going to click back over, and hopefully Dan's still hanging on there. All right. You have a wonderful night. <laughs> I'll go back to my toilet. It doesn't work. <laughs> Hey guys, you you still here? I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Just, just about. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Dan, uh, what's what's been going on in the gaming world of Hardly Dan? No, but you sa- it sounded like you guys had a lot of fun out there. I'd, l- I'd love to go to something like that. But oh, nothing ever happens here in North Devon. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. I mean, it, it's it's been a while, like I said, since Video Games Live was here, and I'm hoping it's going to be here soon. But I mean, we did. We had a blast, and and it's you know that that Zelda music. It, That's fantastic. It's, hearing all that stuff. Uh, you know, like uh, rearranged and, and actually fresh composition. It's just, it, it sounded so good. Oh man, it was a lot of fun. Did you see um, that Russian gymnast who did her flips and whatever? No, but I did. heard about it. I, I need to probably go on YouTube and check that out. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I saw it live. I was like, hang on a minute, I recognize that music. <laughs> and, like, all the people there were just like looking and thinking, like, you could tell they had no idea what they were listening to. But. Uh, there's part of me that loves that and part of me that, that annoys the shit out of me. But yeah. anyway. All right, Dan, all about you, man. Spotlight on you. Okay, well, uh, I haven't been playing a huge ma- amount this, this week. Uh, I've 
playing a lot of Hunt for the Torchlight 2 release date. Yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a lot of that. I can't wait for that, man. Yeah, but there's a uh, rumor about the 28th of August, but that's yeah. just the rumor. How much of summer is actually left? Like, there's not much summer left, is there? We're getting pretty close to autumn, or the fall, as you guys call it. I would have thought that game should have been out before Darksiders, before The Last Story, before Guild Wars 2, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I don't um, know. Can't wait. I really, really want to play that. Yeah. But yeah, games wise, it's, it's been pretty much the same as the last show, Dead Island. Yeah, we did get some Dead Island in. We got a big eight hour <laughs> marathon oh, yeah. in a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I still haven't so, played. I still haven't played that yet, man. Oh, oh that, that was so much. Well, those like, eight hours kind of flew by. Brandon, you have no there. idea how horribly great Dead Island is. Wait a minute. So, do you guys have it on PS3? The PC. Uh, PC. You know what? Y'all get on my nerves when you have stuff on PC. <laughs> Damn. Uh, that's all right, man. Just just uh, just save up a little cash. We'll, we'll go on New Egg. We'll look at some stuff for you, and you know. No, no. How about y'all just get it on PS3 so you can play with me? <laughs> Shit. Well, you buy me a PS3, and I'll get it on that. <laughs> well, 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 you know what, Dan? I think I will. I, you know. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that that was a ridiculous amount of fun, and. Um, it is that game. It has no right to be that fun at all, really. Does yeah, it? I, mean, I agree with you. It's got so many glitches and problems with it, but it's just it makes me laugh. So I was playing it a bit myself the other day, and there's um there's a stage on the beach, and um, there's a little marker on the mini map showing me there was a quest there. I went there, and suddenly this voice comes from nowhere. The, the character is not there. It's not been rendered. There's just this, <laughs> uh, yeah. disembodied voice giving me a quest. <laughs> Kill these zombies. He's like, oh, cheers. And then I can't click on him to get my reward. And he's never been back since. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, if you guys go on my Steam account and check my screenshots, I totally took like five screenshots of this cutscene that Dan and I were in the other day, where like the whole background is like a black hole, man. <laughs> like it didn't even render right. It looks like shit. Yeah, apparently, because um, I played that same level again uh, about an hour afterwards with uh, DJ Leroy, and exactly the same thing happened to him as well. Uh, <laughs> It was so awful, but it's so much yeah. fun. I like the beach balls of doom. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you you heard? Did you hear last week about the uh, the beach ball that I kicked that killed me? <laughs> I literally kicked the it beach was, ball. It, it it killed Lee as well. Didn't yeah. It? <laughs> yeah, it was the I, beach I wanted ball to play a bit of soccer on the beach, but no one was up for that. After no, you two died. <laughs> not after that. So I have a question about De- Dead Island, Dan. Okay. Okay. So okay is okay. Uh, if you had to choose. Uh, Left for Dead or Dead Island? Now, which Left for Dead? Uh, either one. Okay, well, well, for for argument's sake, let's say Left for Dead too. That's a tough one. I I do like Left for Dead two on the PC, especially since you get pretty much all the Left for Dead one with it as well. Um, oh, okay. But well, there's so much more of an RPG feel to Left Left to Dead Island. Yeah, um, really. I think I'd probably pick Dead Island just because I'm having so much fun, like crying tears of laughter. Well, some and of the stuff that happens. And... It does. It does kind of remind you of Fallout with zombies. Like when when people said Fallout with zombies originally, mm. that's kind of accurate. It's just that they left off the beginning part that was like a really shitty Fallout with zombies. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 some of the weapon mods you can make are just fantastic. It's yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, Dan I've got actually a gun that makes them vomit. Yeah. <laughs> How about the the baseball bat, Dan? Oh yeah, I got this baseball bat with like a circular saw blade in the middle of it. So you're just hitting them with that. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, it's so much fun. It, especially, it's it's not so great on your own, but you know, two, three other people, and time just flies by. Fantastic. Uh, much underrated game, I think. Nice, nice. Well worth the price I paid for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else, Dan? That's that's been about it, I guess. Um, yeah. I tried to play a bit of End of Nations with uh, Bobby Gooding from Iron Hammers. Uh, there was a beta weekend, and I think we both forgot. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's just been. Oh well, I've, a friend of mine, James, lent me his Raspberry Pi. I've got that up and running. Uh, oh, you got, and cool got it working now. Yeah, yeah, I've got it up in my bedroom, uh, running XBMC, so I can stream all my media. And it's working on the old TV? Yeah, yeah. Um, Cool. It's it's really cool. It's obviously not a great signal, and the screen's too small where it is, but yeah, I can use my phone (laughs) as a remote. Sweet. Yeah, lie in bed and watch Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah the Trisha Helfer show. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, apparently I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you, you're. <laughs> what, what the hell's the character's name? I can't even remember. Guy Spolter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hardly dead. Guy is Baltar. Um, yeah, we had a couple tweets in I wanted to take care of here. We got one from, uh, Stuart Fowler, uh, under, under the moniker of, uh, Veteran Gamers UK on Twitter. And, uh, this one sort of thrown at you, Dan, because, uh, you, you'd be the one to field it. Uh, he says, I am loving all the indie games that make you scared. Slender, SCP-087-B, and A Mother's Inferno. What about you? I've only played one of them. And that's slender. And it's, it's what, like 50 meg if that you download it straight from their site. And it's so basic. You're just walking through some woods. It seems like you're an incredibly overweight person because you can't run very fast <laughs> or for very long. <laughs> Is that what makes it scary or? Um, you know? well, no, it's this guy who, uh, the slender man. Yes. Who just kind of follows you. And for a while, you don't know you're being followed. You've got to go through the woods and pick up these pieces of paper. There's eight pieces of paper to, be, to find. It's like little things that little messages on them about, you know, what's going on. And, um, yeah, I was playing it for a bit, and I was like, well, this is all right. And I pick up this first piece of paper, and suddenly this this deep drumming starts in the background. And that, that kind of helps build up temp- tension a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you get more pieces of paper, the, the drumming becomes more and more intense, and then you'll turn around, and they'll, they'll just suddenly there'll be this guy right behind you. <laughs> oh, shit, what's... <laughs> or, or the screen will, like, go static for a second and just give you those kind of short sharp shocks and it's um it's really atmospheric it's it's one of those games you play at night headphones no lights and uh, a diaper <laughs> <laughs> so so it's kind of like a simplified sort of eternal darkness thing or what yeah i mean it's incredibly simple you've got uh, a flashlight and a run button which doesn't last very long that's about it I'm gonna have to check into that because i mean uh, you, i mean i've i've said it already and i i maybe it's a little premature but I think Dead Space 3 jumped the shark, man. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be scary at all. Like, right now, I'm out. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm just yeah, out. I, I said yeah, ages ago about the, the second one didn't yeah. scare me at all in the slightest. The first one really did. Once you kind of get the idea and the, the almost pattern that things are going to come in, it's... Yeah. Whereas, I've, been, you know, I've been too scared to play the first one. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> the first one's up. great. The first one's great. Man up, son. Man up, son. You know, <laughs> it's like I want to play the. I was like, I want to play them, but like I can't really play those type of games, man. I just can't. It, it just, it just, it just nerve wracking. Like, um, what was that game? Uh, what, what was the game that everybody loves? Uh, that came out on Xbox years ago. The first game. Oh, condemned. No, 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 not, not, not condemned. Bioshock. Yeah, Bioshock. That first, I played Bioshock when, when I first got my my 360, right? And the in the Bioshock, I can't, I can't, I don't like nothing that I can't see. And then I turn around and I see a big motherfucker coming at me. I can't, I, I, don't, I don't like that. No, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, so atmospheric though. That's that's sort of one that's yeah. on my on my shame list. I've never played all the way through Bioshock, so that's something on the to do list for holiday right before. Uh, Infinite. The first one was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The second yeah. one let me down a little. I don't think I'll be doing the second one. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I'm glad to hear they've axed the uh, multiplayer for the third one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. I think that's a good move. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, yeah, because then, you know, more time spent on single player. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hate when these, I hate when these companies, you know, they, they try to, they try to force multiplayer on the shit and it ain't about multiplayer. Just, 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 just make, make the game. Yeah. 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 You know? Well, everybody feels like they need a reason to, uh, to, to kind of keep these games relevant. And I, there's a part of me that thinks that that's not it. I don't see why they can't, you know, if they decide they need multiplayer for it, then work on it afterwards and add it as DLC, perhaps. And then people that want it can get it. Yeah. I mean, that's I, what I think. I think there's a lot Just, of uh, approaches that, that could happen, but, you know, there's, there's too much money being thrown around and, there, and it, you know, there's too much of a risk for it being, uh, you know, a dud. Yeah. Yeah, right. games got to, they've got to tick all the boxes. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got another one from Jonathan Wilson, Mr. John Mouse. He says, I bought Heroes of Ruin for 3DS. It is awesome. You guys, thoughts? Uh, and he says, also, Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy is your type of game, Steve. And it, I know it is. And I totally would have bought it. 
But that 40 bucks killed me on the same week when my weed trimmer died and I had to go buy a new goddamn weed trimmer. <laughs> I went and bought a new gas weed trimmer. And you know what the weird thing was? I'm thinking that maybe it's not just gaming because as soon as I went and bought this weed trimmer, I saw all the attachments for it. There was like an edger and a, and a limb trimmer, like a, like almost like a, a chainsaw attachment for it. And now they're like Pokemon. Like, man, I want to collect all these fucking attachments. And <laughs> I don't, I don't know why. Is there a subscription service where you can get like free attachments? <laughs> there may very well be weed trimmer plus. That's what it is. <laughs> oh God. But yeah, I'm, and also I, you know, I think theater rhythm. It's not really a mainstream game. Like, it's for me, and I'm probably not a mainstream guy, I guess. I mean, I don't know. In, in my scope, maybe you guys would <laughs> have a little bit more conviction saying that. But I got a funny feeling a couple months down the line, it's going to be like half price. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that's kind of what I'm waiting it for. It probably will. Yeah. Heroes of Ruin, I really, really wanted that. I played the demo, actually, with Indifference from uh, Game Enthuse. And uh, we had a blast playing it, and I totally had every intention of buying it. Uh, but I mean, I've heard it's short, uh, it looks like just a generic Diablo and you know, it's, it's dungeon crawly. Who doesn't like dungeon crawly, man? I was sorely tempted the other day to, um, uh, go in a bit more depth and get myself a, a 3DS XL. Yeah. Yeah. 180 pounds with Mario Kart set. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun too. Uh, Mario Kart uh, is Mario Kart, man. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. Yeah. I want a Vita. Yeah, you know, I kind of do too, but I I only want one just to want one. Like, there's nothing... Yeah, m- yeah me, me too. <laughs> there's nothing that I want to play. It's just like, oh, I'd, I'd kind of like to have one of those, you know. Yeah. But they got to bring their A game, and, I, you know, the, the real test is going to be holiday. That's true. See how it performs after the holiday. But, um, but, yeah, I think that's about it, fellas. Well, thank you very much. What about any shout-outs, Mr. Casino? Big shout outs to uh, to the brothers here at the Gamesmen podcast. Big shout out to my brother, uh, LB, um, from my podcast, Two Brothers, Two Mics. Uh, y'all can check us out. iTunes, Stitcher, you know, all, all that good shit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. I don't have any other shout outs. Dan. Uh, yeah, a bit quiet for me this week on the shout out list. Uh, I'd like to casino a shout out cheers for coming along uh couldn't have done it without you and um yeah my family we had a bit of a hard week last week and it's good to see them again so hi to all you guys if you're listening if you're all not right. then screw you <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. excellent i for me obviously you know number one let's get it out of the way vghub.net a lot of great content at vghub.net Brandon, thank you for coming on. It's always fun to to have you on. You know, I, man, I, man, you know what? Every time you invite me on, man, I'm always down when I when I can. <laughs> so you know, it's always fun to be on here. I know it's going to be filled with chuckles and tomfoolery every time. Of course, of course, <laughs> and and also, man, like like I, I'm definitely have to get you and Dan on uh on uh on my solo show, Casinos Corner, so we can talk about. Uh, some uh, some nineties porn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> among other things, and help out post office stories. Yeah, yeah, nineties <laughs> porn and postal post office oh, stories. Oh God, I got some too. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. My God. So we definitely need to make that <laughs> shit happen. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Dan, thank you for being a stalwart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? How about an anti shout out this week? You know what? Before I do the anti shout out, a big shout out to Einza Masil and for and to Amrus for coming on and uh, talking a little bit about Zelda, about the concert. So, all right, the anti shout out. I got these fucking mice in my house. Okay, I think there ain't no pinky in the brain. It's like the brain and the brain and the brain. These bastards have eaten the bait off of all of these traps six times already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why these traps aren't springing every time. Like I, I could literally take a fork or something and drop it on it to spring the trap and the trap snaps every time. These got to be the smartest goddamn mice I've ever come across in my life. They're good, man. I mean, and I've tried every trap. None of them work. So my wife is supposed to be getting a kitten, but now it's still too young to be, uh, you know, to be separated from its mother. I can't wait to get that fucking cat here. I can't take it anymore. And I'm not a cat person either, but I can't wait. 
Oh, I can't take it. So there's my anti shout out. These mice. Oh, <laughs> yikes. And, and it's summertime. It's not like normally they try to come in in the winter, but geez, I don't know. Yeah, they're coming in to use your aircon. <laughs> Maybe. It's, it has been hot. I will say that. Jeez, it was. All right. Web for the week to come. Uh, Brandon, where will you be on the internets? You guys can find me uh, at um, PSN Casino 72. And uh yeah, that's that's where you guys can find me cuz I don't have a nice I don't have a nice ass PC like 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 Dan and Steve. I'm sorry. I don't have a nice PC. <laughs> oh god. So, you know, so anybody want to anybody want to add me on PSN Casino 72. And now that's Casino with the K. Yes, yes. I I went, I went I went real ghetto on y'all asses. So, you know. Oh god, the Casino Computer Fund. That's right. That's right. And if y'all want to help me with my with with my um with with my rig, uh, you know, um, I have a PayPal account. Y'all can donate some money too, and so I. Now can... we're setting up a Kickstarter. Oh shit, son! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kickstarter account. You know what is? You know if if uh them motherfuckers can come out with a Happy Thanks Killing two and raise like hundred million dollars, mm-hmm. I know y'all motherfuckers can give me a PC. All we need is eight hundred bucks. That's it. <laughs> oh, he's eight hundred bucks. Oh, Dan, how about web for the week to come? Yeah, you can find me as ever on Steam. It's hardly Dan. Twitter, hardly Dan. Uh, that's about it at the moment. My Xbox is gathering dust. Um, but Iron Hammers is back. We are recording in the next couple of hours, so you can find me on ironhammers.org and watch me to actually see what I look like on our <laughs> recorded live video show. And you did the OC last week. Yeah, I did, and I think I'm doing it again. This week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do uh, sort of a hybrid show. That part one is going to air on the overseas connection this week, and part two is going to air on our show the following week. So, yeah. Yeah, that's about it for me. What about you, Steve? Ah, uh, as ever, like just like you, J S S L I F E L I K E, pretty much everywhere. That's Steam. That's Skype. That's Twitter. That's sometimes PSN. That's sometimes Xbox Live, but not a lot because it's silver now. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's that's about it. So, uh, all right, Dan, take us home. Okay. Obviously, you're listening to this. You know about us, uh, but you may not have realized that the sites had a nice revamp, and we've got forums now. We'd love to hear your yes. thoughts. You know, maybe some show input through the forums. Yeah, and you know great. what I did. Um, I I like the uh, the uh, new the uh, the revamp of the site, man. The shit looks great, man. Yeah, it's pretty sharp, huh? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It looks real good. Well, I did add a plug-in. If you want to create an account on the site for the forums, you can now log in with your Facebook, your Twitter, your Google account, or your Steam account. Nice. And it'll automatically make you an account on the site. So, bang. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You can also. Have a look at us on Facebook, just search for Gamesman. Click that like button. Most of the content, pretty much all the content of the site's on there, I think, at the moment. Yeah, basically. You can catch us on Stitcher. And um, I know I mention this every week, but um, we're doing Extra Life again. Yes. And um, when we say we want you to help us, it, it's not really us you're helping. It's these you know, the sick kids out there uh, all over the world. You know, I'm doing something for a local charity, a uh, local hospital in Bristol everyone has kind of got different locations the money is going to whoever you sponsor it goes to their local hospital and um, you know those kids some of them terrible diseases they really every penny actually really helps them. so if you can sponsor us that'd be fantastic you just go to extra-life.org forward slash team forward slash bg hub team 2012 nice. no matter how big or small the donation is every penny will go and help some child well put thank you um, <laughs> We also want more voicemails. We haven't had one for a while. Uh, so call the RPG hotline at 412-267-RPG1. If you're mute or don't like talking on the phone, you can email us at thegamesmanrpg at gmail.com. Email's too long. Go for Twitter. That's at thegamesmanrpg. And if you fancy listening to it at work or sitting on the bus, check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash thegamesmanrpg. Please don't forget iTunes reviews. We need them. Yeah, definitely. We could do some more uh, British reviews because I think we're beating the guys in the States at the moment. Yeah, so still. Get some more in there. <laughs> I haven't checked them in a while. I actually need to check them. I think that's it, isn't it? Yep. All right. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, yep. yeah, thank you, Dan. And uh, thank you, Brandon. Always always a blast. 
for sure, for sure, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you to uh, to the tweeters, to uh, Mr. Stuart Fowler and Jonathan Wilson. Thank you, guys. And I think that's going to do it. So until episode 81, on behalf of Casino 31, on behalf of Hardly Dan, I am Lifelike. We are the gamesmen. And until next time, we ask... What, what role, role will you, you play? play? <laughs> got disk space left for 104 hours and 50 minutes that's all i got no we better do it quick tonight then. want to open up one of the show notes too dan just any of them just to do the end stuff yeah i got that already damn oh, fucking <laughs> professional damn <laughs> ploptimus prime needs his bumblebee yeah <laughs> <laughs> ploptimus yeah. prime motherfuckers where, where my ribs and fries at <laughs> made it sound like some kind of butt plug. satisfied with this podcast please return any portion for a full review please don't put the dr quinn in there but you know you, you probably are aren't you <laughs>